It's Christmas Day and I'm understandably busy, so I'm trying to keep this short, but I have finished a couple of games this month, so let's talk about that instead. I finished a few games, and I'm going to talk about them all, but I'm not going to talk too much about them, because I am going to make my game of the year list, and this year it's actually going to be on time for once. Well, on time for me. I like to leave mine a little bit later. I don't like it when they come out in December. I think that's stupid. Games come out in December. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to make my Game of the Year video, and I'm going to talk about all of the games I'm going to talk about now in there, because I like all of them. So I don't want to talk too much about them here, but I'm going to give like a little brief bit about each of them. The first one was Pokemon Scarlet, and it is easily my favourite Pokemon game since the remakes of Gold and Silver, and I feel kind of like I'm going insane whenever I hear anyone else talk about them. It runs like shit, and I'm not going to argue that. But it's also the most fun I've had in a Pokemon game in like a decade. If you don't include Gold and Silver, it is probably the most fun I've had in a Pokemon game in a very long time. Like I did like X and Y. Those were the last ones I kind of liked, but I think I prefer this to those even. I don't think Pokemon has been fun in quite a while. I always get them because I like them. I want to like them more than I do. But this is the first time I've actually like had fun with the Pokemon game in a while. The only issue I had was... The game's weirdly balanced in that I find the start of the game really easy and the end of the game really hard. I feel like that sounds like it makes sense, but what I mean is, like, I was outpacing everything up until the end of the game when suddenly everything I fought jumped up, like, 20 levels and I don't know what happened. <laughs> there didn't seem to be any, like, actual progression. It was just suddenly everything's 20 levels higher than me and I wasn't expecting it. I beat all the Titans first. Like, immediately after beating the last Titan, you get sent to go talk to Arvin, and you do, and it starts a fight, and the fight is against him, and he's got, like, Pokemon that are, like, 20, 30 levels higher than mine, and I just, there was no warning. And it was the same with the last, what's it called? The last Team Starbase. The last one of those, their team was, like, 20 levels higher than mine, and again, no warning for that. The Pokemon League was actually the easiest thing. Like, I just, I didn't really get it. <laughs> it just suddenly spiked right at the end. I ended up just like, I went and grinded chances for a bit, because you can now force them to spawn, which is really good, and like, solve the issue. But I think that is like my actual major complaint. Like, yeah, it runs bad, but the thing that bothered me most was these bits of poor balancing throughout. Like, I can put up with the fact that it runs kind of shit. I know I was lucky, but it never crashed on me or anything. I never had any like, actually like problematic bugs it just didn't run very well and i have played games that ran worse and enjoyed them just as much so it just makes me feel really weird because i feel like everyone else hates it and i don't get why this is not the worst pokemon game this is not the worst pokemon game that came out this year fucking arceus came out this year and i hate arceus i thought arceus was shit i know everyone else liked it and this is like this is what i'm talking about everyone loved arceus and i hated it and everyone hates this and i love it so i don't know maybe like Maybe I'm just, like, different than everyone else. Who knows? I don't know. I thought it was really good. And I'll talk about it more in my Game of the Year video. I can't remember now if I... I think I actually finished this one first. I don't remember. Anyway, so another one I finished was God of War Ragnarok. And that, I ended up loving just as much as everyone else. I actually didn't want to. It's not that I didn't want to like it exactly, but I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. I didn't really like... 2018, which I've spoken about previously, I spoke about in last month's podcast. Everyone really liked that, and I didn't. And everyone really liked this, so I was expecting to not. To some extent as well, I tried to, like, avoid people's opinions of things before I've played them. Especially before I've played them, but at least before I've finished it. Like, I don't want other people's expectations, essentially. I prefer to just find out about it on my own. But that was kind of unavoidable with this game, and so I, like, kind of wanted to not like it as much. It makes me sound contrarian, but that isn't the point. <laughs> I just prefer to make my own opinion about it. But I just couldn't avoid it. It just is really fucking good. <laughs> it's just really good. I don't want to go too much into it because it's like... Some of the reasons why I like it so much is like spoilers. And some of the reasons there's stuff I'm going to get into in the Game of the Year video. But just the further I got into the game, the more I liked it. And the harder it was to deny that it was as good as everyone else was saying. It's a really fun game. But it's also a very emotional story, and I really appreciated like everything that happened. Speaking of emotional stories, 
the last game I finished was Little Gator Game. I really have trouble saying that out loud for some reason. I've gotten better at it, as I've said it more, but it just it just doesn't flow right. It feels weird coming out of my mouth. So I've actually been like interested in it for a while, but I only actually picked it up on release because I needed one more game to play before the end of the year, you know, for my videos. And I was like, well, this is coming out, might as well try it. And it's great. <laughs> like, I really like this game. It's one of my favourites. It's easily one of my favourite games of this year. And it's just so good. It's like really obvious, like, it's like obviously adorable, but it's also got this like really like emotional core to it that like resonated with me in a lot of different ways. And I don't know, like, I really liked it. I just, I think it was really good. I think I, I can't explain. I can't explain without going into more detail than I'd like to at the moment. But yeah, it's just, it's just a really fucking good game. And it kind of like is emblematic of a problem I've got, actually. I really like this game. I really like all the games I've talked about right now. But there are also three of the most recent games I've played. And I know there's other games I've played this year that I've really liked. But it, this is one of the things that makes writing my game of the year list so difficult. And it's one of the reasons why I actually like to leave them for a while. Perhaps a decade is a bit long. I like to leave my game of the year lists a little bit because I, there are games that I've played this year that I really liked while I was playing them, and then I have not thought about once since. I liked Elden Ring, but the only time I think about Elden Ring now is when other people are talking about Elden Ring, or when I am like watching a video about Elden Ring. It's not like something that I like. I'll be sitting around and just go, "Oh, remember that thing that I did." One of my core memories for Elden Ring is farming those people in, you know, the, the Blood Canyon place, I've forgotten what it's called. Farming the Albanorix there. That is one of the core memories I've got of that game. Yeah, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? There are games that I've played this year where I remember, like, every detail about them. Or, like, I remember, like, specific things that have happened in them that have made me feel a certain way. And then there are games like Elden Ring where... Like, other people think these are amazing games, and I'm not saying they're not good games. Like, I definitely liked it, but at the same time, the core takeaway I've got from that game is, oh, that was a really good farming spot. The reason I like to leave my lists a while is because I want to talk about the games that I'm thinking about. I want to talk about the games that come back to me, that, like, leave me with a lasting impact. Like, Stray, actually. Stray is one of those games that other people love, and I do not give a shit about. I thought it was fine. It was like, okay. I love cats. I think the only interesting thing about that game, sorry, not the only interesting thing. I, I, I'm not saying the game isn't like interesting. It's more a matter of like the thing people were most interested in about that game was the fact that you played as a cat. And I was like, oh, I get that that's kind of what the game was about. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but that only can take you so far. There has to be something else there. And I just didn't really feel like there was. I also didn't really like the cat. Like, I, I didn't think it controlled very well. I didn't, like, enjoy being a cat. I liked the robots more than the cat. But anyway, again, I get sidetracked easily. This is what happens when I'm not tired. I get, like, more hyper about it, so I kind of, like, go off on tangents more. I don't know, maybe I'm not going off on tangents more. Do I go off on this many tangents normally? I don't know. What I'm trying to get at is, I like to talk about the games that I think about for a long time. And that's really hard to do when you're talking about things from this year, this year. Even talking about when am I usually do, February or something, even then isn't very long, especially for games that like came out in December. But it's a bit more, at least. I just like to give it the time and it's hard with these sorts of games because like, I really like Little Gate Game, but will it last? Like, I think it will right now, but I don't actually know. And it's also like a little bit weird because I actually, I have the opposite opinion on my reviews than I do on my game of the year lists. In my reviews, I score them immediately after I beat the game. And I write my sentence like as soon as I can after beating the game, while it's the most fresh. My reviews, my sentences are about the experience you have while playing the game. Whereas my game of the year lists are more about the games I think are important from that year. And there are games that I have played this year that I think are really good in the moment and I think you'll really enjoy, but I don't think have the lasting impact of other things. And there are like the opposite of that as well, where there are games that I know 
perhaps aren't the best game, but I think are more important overall. And that's where I like, I have the trouble writing my game of the year list. This is why I like writing them as well. But it's where I have the issues with, and it's why I like to leave them a little bit. I've got a bit more time. Like I say, I think that video will come out in February. I've got something else coming out in January already. So that'll come out in February. So it gives me a bit more time to think about these things. A bit more time to ruminate on them. Perhaps also a little bit more time to catch up on things I've missed from this year. <laughs> but, like, I've still not finished Crisis Core. Although, I don't know if I'd count that anyway, because it is very much just a remake. Some remakes will add new things. And I don't think this one does, does it? It just is. Like, I think some of the cutscenes are literally just upscaled anyway. It's weird, because I, I was playing it, and this is one of the games where I, like, I feel like the game itself looks better than some of the cutscenes, because some of the cutscenes I think are literally just upscaled old ones. And then some of the things are done, like, actually in engine, and the in engine stuff looks so much better. Because it all stuff looks weirdly grainy, which would come from the upscaling. I might be wrong on this. It might be an intentional, like, filter or something that I just don't like. I don't know. But anyway, kind of besides the point. As for my channel, Yakuza Kiwami 2 will be finishing this week, and rather than starting a new LP next month like I usually would do, I'm actually going to be taking a break for a while. There's like lots of reasons why, but the main one is I have a just ridiculous amount of Sunbreak episodes already recorded. The last episode for this year will be episode 52. I think it's 52. Is either 52 is the last one for this year, or it's the first one for next year? It's one of the two, I don't remember exactly which. But I've recorded all the way up to episode 102. Which means that that's enough episodes at the current Just Doing It On The Weekend. That's enough episodes to do me until nearly July. And that's just a lot. <laughs> like, things are going to happen and it doesn't leave me any room to, like, respond to them. It looks like I've barely played the game from, like, your perspective. But from my perspective, I'm, like, so much further ahead. And it's just going to take such a long time to catch up if I keep going at this rate that what I'm going to do instead of doing a new weekday LP is I'm going to move my Sunbreak episodes to the weekdays for the time being. So there'll be three of those over the week now, which is only one more a week, but it's still better. And I'm just not going to do a weekend LP for a bit. It's not like a huge difference. I mean, honestly, in some ways, I might end up putting them up on the weekends as well if it gets to that point, if I get so many more, because I'm, I'm still recording more now. But yeah, so that's why I'm doing that. And I'm planning on doing this for quite a while, actually. It's going to be until March, because there's an LP I want to do for a game that comes out in February, which is probably really obvious, but I want to do that. That was the first time when I was like, I definitely want to do this. And I was like, right, well, I'll just leave it until that comes out, and then I'll get back to doing my normal rotation at that point. But yeah, so that's the main thing that's happening with my LPs. Otherwise, it's just going to, like, Carry on mostly as normal. All my other videos carry on as normal. The only other thing is this is the last podcast that's going up on this channel, which is to say I'm starting yet another new channel. Basically, I've started doing the scripted videos again, and they do okay. They do comparatively better than most other things I make, but they don't do as well as I'd like. And to some extent, maybe people just don't like them, which is like, okay. But in another way, I think what I can kind of see like, particularly with, was it my Game of the Year video? I think it was my Game of the Year video. Put that out, and it started a bit slow, but it started doing better. And then I put out an episode of my podcast, and my podcast did really badly, the same as always. But because of that, my Game of the Year video just stopped gaining anything. It was like an immediate cutoff. Like, I already kind of knew that the podcast wasn't helping, but... It's not just not helping, it's actively harming at this point, and I'm trying to do the scripted videos again properly, so I'm going to take these off my main channel, and I'm going to start yet another new channel, and just put them on there. I've had people complain, not complain, but I've had people like ask why I even put them on YouTube, and it's just kind of because I wanted to. Like, honestly, I make everything I make is just because I feel like it. <laughs> like, I don't do it for any other reason. But yeah, I'm just going to start a new channel and put my podcast on there. Maybe it'll do better there, I kind of doubt it, but I also don't really care. If we look at what I make that does well, that is my scripted videos and my scripted videos, by which I mean like my scripted videos and my sentences. They're the only things I make that do even relatively well. Even I'm talking like more than single digit views is relatively well for me. My sentences on TikTok at least 
We'll do a couple of hundred each. I've got one that got like 19,000, which is good. They all do at least consistently on there. YouTube Shorts is just fucking weird. I put up a sentence on the Shorts channel for Pokemon, the new one that just came out, and it got 20 views. I put one up for, it was either Arceus or Diamond and Pearl, like a week beforehand, and that got like 900. And then I put up one for Xenoblade Chronicles, and that got 150. And like, I don't understand, honestly, like I don't understand the way YouTube works. I have noticed that basically on YouTube Shorts, you get your views for an hour and then never again. But I thought doing stuff that was like recent would help. And sometimes it does, like God of War. I put one up for that, that did okay. But like I say, I put one up for Pokemon Scarlet and that did fucking nothing. And I, I, I don't get it. Like YouTube Shorts just seems to be terrible. At least TikTok's consistent. Sometimes things will like blow up there. But more than that, they're at least consistent. YouTube Shorts is just all over the place. But anyway, those are the things I make that do at least relatively well. So that would tell you to not make anything else, wouldn't it? But I like making everything else. And the only reason I make anything is because I like making it. So I'm just going to carry on. And if I'm just going to carry on, I need to find a way to carry on that doesn't harm everything else. And in some respects, yes, it's harming things by me not giving them more time. But at the same time, I would get so tired if I was doing just the one thing. That's why I make so many things. Like, I just, I just get tired of doing the same thing all the time. I was talking about this to, I think, my wife the other day, where I don't think I'm particularly good at the things I do. I like doing them. I don't think I'm great at doing them. But what I am is good at finding efficient ways of doing them. And that ends up consistently giving me more time to do other stuff. Like, I found a better way of doing my podcast now. I've got, like, templates and stuff. I've got, like, a spreadsheet that writes all of my descriptions for me and stuff. I make templates. I make automated processes. I make things that make making things easier. And I'm very good at that. What I'm not great at is stuff that can't be automated like that, which is why the scripted videos are so rough on me. I've completely forgotten why I started talking about that. I'm sure there was a reason, but I don't remember what it was. Oh yeah, that's it, right. So everything else I make, I like making, but it doesn't actually take as long as it seems like it would take because I've got very efficient ways of doing each of them. Whereas the scripted videos require a lot from me, so I want them to do the best. The rest of them, I actually don't care if they don't do well because a lot of them are just only take me like an hour or two to make anyway. Whereas a scripted video, I will easily spend 10 to 20 hours making one, possibly longer, especially if it's on a game. You have to factor in the fact that I've played that entire game. I never make a video on a game I haven't finished. So every single one of my sentences is for a game I've finished. And that ends up being a 15 second long video for games that... Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I spent 120 hours in that. And I made a 15 second long video after it. I like making these things, but they take a lot longer than they seem like they take. <laughs> I wish they didn't. But yeah, so I obviously want that stuff to do well. and. I don't want to stop doing this, so throwing it somewhere else seems like the best choice. I could just leave it on the audio platforms, but I don't know. Like, one of the reasons why I put it on YouTube is because I am way more likely to watch a podcast if it's on YouTube than listening to it, because I used to listen to podcasts when I was, like, traveling, so, like, when I was going to uni all the time, and then at first I was doing that every day, and then it got less common because I started traveling to uni in a quicker way like i used to have to get the bus and that was like a three hour round trip which was the length of like one episode of a podcast depending on what i was listening to but then i started getting the train and that ended up taking my trip from three hours down to like an hour an hour and a half so that became less frequent and then it got to the point where i didn't have to travel anymore and then it's just become i don't watch them like i don't listen to podcasts anymore i only listen to podcasts when they're up on youtube so i put mine on youtube for people who are like me not many people are, but if there are some, then there you go. At the time of recording, I've not actually made the channel yet, but probably by the time this goes up, I will have. So there should be a link for that. If there's not already a link for it, there will be a link for it in all of my videos from the first of the month. So you won't have to wait long. Look, I had some more notes, but they're really depressing to read. <laughs> so I'm probably just going to leave it because I'm not in that bad of a mood. I'm not in as bad of a mood recording this as I was when I wrote it. But yeah. We'll just see how things go with this change. All right, I think that's everything. So, 
Special thanks to all of my patrons. You can join them over at patreon.com slash holdengatsby and for one dollar a month you'll get to see what I'm working on early and get exclusive roles in my Discord along with other rewards I might think of. You can also just follow me there if you want to for free, as it's probably the best place to see all of my content as soon as it's available. There's links to the Patreon along with my Discord, TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, and all the other podcast platforms in the description for this episode. Finally, don't forget you can email me using podcastby at gmail.com if you've got anything you want to say. Thanks for sticking around. Bye. Special thanks to my patrons, Justin Wood, Hobbs, Koopy Vegeta, and Gunrunner. You can join my patrons at patreon.com slash holdengatsby, check out my TikTok and Twitter at holdengatsby, and follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash holdengatsby. Don't forget to subscribe to all of my channels, if you want more you can watch my last video now, but if not, then thanks for sticking around, bye.